In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural scratched metal material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support the channel and also get the project files for this tutorial, as well as my other tutorials, then you can do that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. So here's the procedural setup that we're going to be creating. And so I will walk you through the entire process on how to create this. Now I'm also going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on in this tutorial, so if you don't have that enabled, you can just go to the Edit and then go to the Preferences. And then over here on the add-ons, the search here, you're just going to start to type in Node and then just turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. If you don't know how to use this, I will show you how to use this. It's a really great add-on for working with procedural nodes in Blender. Now real quick before we continue, I wanted to show you the setup that I have. So I just have an icosphere and I subdivided it and just stuck it in the middle of the world and I also shaded it smooth. And then I also added this plane light here to get some lighting coming down on the sphere. Now I also added an HDRI to get very realistic lighting. So you can see right here, I added in this Aerodynamics Workshop 1K HDR, and this is on HDRI Haven. So I'll leave the link in the video description if you'd like to download the same HDR that I'm using. So I just downloaded the 1K version, and then I added this in as an environment texture into the world settings. And this will help to get some very realistic reflections on our sphere. And then one last thing before we continue, I wanted to thank Sketchfab for sponsoring sponsoring this video. Buy, sell, and even upload your own 3D models on Sketchfab. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models in your browser and even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D asset store where you can purchase 3D models and assets. Check out Sketchfab with the links in the description. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to hit new right here, and then I can just call this scratched metal. And then here are the nodes. So we have the principal shader on default. All right, so let's first make this a metal shader. So the metallic, I'm gonna turn this all the way up so that it's a metal shader. And then we can just turn the roughness down and you can see already it's starting to look pretty cool. Now I wanna add just a tiny little bit of like grain or rust or something on the metal just because I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a wave texture. I'm just gonna drop it right here. And then using a feature from the Node Wrangler, I'm going to select the wave texture and press Control T. That's gonna add the texture coordinate and mapping. And I'm just gonna plug the object up to the mapping. And that way the texture is going to be placed around the object more evenly. And then using another feature from the Node Wrangler, I can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on the wave texture and that'll preview it. All right, let's go ahead and work with these different settings here. So the scale, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 0.1 and it does look really big right now, but we're gonna play around with some of these settings which will make it smaller. And you can also totally change this value later if you want to. Now the distortion, I'm gonna turn this to something like a 78 so that it has a lot of distortion and you can already see that you can start to see those waves a lot better. Now the detail, I'm gonna turn this up all the way to 16 so that it's very detailed. And the detail roughness, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 0.75. And there we go, now you can really see we have a lot more detail with that detail roughness. So if you wanna go back and change the scale now, you can do that if you'd like to. All right, so I want this wave texture to go into the color and I also wanna put it into the normal. So first I will just plug it up to the base color and then I can control shift and click on this and you can see what it looks like. But I don't want it to be this dark, I just want it to kinda of be a subtle thing. So to change the colors, I wanna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp. I'm just gonna drop it right here and then we can change these colors. So this white one right here, this white tab, I'm going to just make this like a light gray. And then this one right here, I'm gonna make this a pretty light gray too, but it's gonna be pretty close to the first one. So if I control shift and click on it, you can see that these colors are actually pretty close to each other, but one of them is just a little bit darker and one of them is just a little bit lighter. So when I preview that now, you can see it's just a subtle texture, but it does look pretty cool. All right, now I also want this to affect the normal, so I'm gonna drop it into the normal, and then we need to press Shift A, and we need to search for a bump node to convert it to normal data. So we're gonna plug this in right here, and then we just need to put the color up to the height. And now you can see it's very, very rough. Now that is way too strong, so I'm gonna click on this and just turn this down to a .07, so that it's very, very subtle, but you can still see it. But with how this looks currently, you can see that if I just like look around here, all of this noise here, it's like all over the place. And I just want it to be in some areas, but not all of the areas. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and search for another color ramp. 
We will just drop the color amp right in here before they bump, and then we can play around with this to make some of the parts not bumpy and just keep some of the parts smooth. So I will control shift and click on this to preview it. And then I actually wanna switch these. So I'm gonna switch the white and the black values. And then you can see, if I just control shift and click back on this, when I start to turn the black up, you can see that some of these areas, there's now some patchy areas that are smooth. So like right there, there's a patchy area that's smooth. There's some smooth areas right there. So now if I control shift and click on this, to preview the final material. It just looks a bit nicer and you can turn this up even more if you want. So you can see that there's just a little bit of areas here and there which don't have that noise and are pretty smooth. So just play around with this value and get it to how you like. All right, now we're gonna add two layers of scratches on top of this. We're going to add just some random scratches that are all around, and then we're gonna add some big scratches which are going up and down. So I'm first gonna press Shift A and add a noise texture. Here's the noise texture, we'll just drop it here, and then we wanna plug the vector up to the vector here. I can now Control Shift and click on it. Now the scale, I think for now I'm gonna turn this to like a 10, we can change that later if we want. And then the detail, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 10 as well. Now the roughness, I think I'll turn this up to like a 0.8, so that it has a lot of roughness and that adds even more detail. And then we can turn this distortion up and it's going to just make it a little bit wavy. So I'm gonna turn the distortion up to like a 12 and you can see that's what it's looking like. So it's got all this distortion in here and that'll just make some random scratches that are kind of going in different directions. So the scale here, I think now I'll just turn this to like a three. So that is pretty good. Now we wanna plug this into the bump as well so that it looks like we have scratches. So this bump right here, I'm gonna press Shift D and just drop it right here. So now we have a duplicate bump. So now the factor, I can just plug this up to the height and this one, it's already being converted to normal data through the height. So then the second one, the normal, will just go to the normal and then this noise texture is gonna go into the height. So that is how we can add multiple bump maps together. So we have this one right here, this is just the subtle one, and then I can control shift and click on this and you can see there's those swirly bits added right there. Now it's very subtle, so I'm gonna turn the strength of this one up to like a 0.3. So you can see it a lot more, but now it's just all over the place and I don't really want that. I just want some different little parts that are scratchy, but most of it, I actually don't want it to be affecting it. So to do that, I can just take this color amp and I'll press Shift D and just drop it down here. And then we can play around with the values to tell it where we want the scratches to be, but then the rest of it will be smooth. So I'm actually going to switch these back and then I can just control shift and click on it to preview it. So I just wanna put these very close together. So just something like that. So you can see that where the black values are, that's where the scratches are gonna be, but then the white places, there's not gonna be any scratches. So I just wanna make a few scratches here and there. So that's why I'm pushing these two together very, very close. So now if I control shift and click on this, you can see that when I zoom in, there's only scratches here and there, but not all over the place. Now I think the scale is actually a little bit too small. So if I just turn this to maybe like a one, that is a lot better. Now those scratches are a lot bigger and there's not quite as many. So I can just control shift and click on this to see where the scratches are. Control shift and click on this and then there we go. If you wanna make the scratches a little bit more deep, you could turn up the strength here, but now I can just control shift and click on this and there we go. So we have all these little random scratches here. There's like some there and some there, but they're all pretty random, which looks pretty nice. All right, so now I just wanna add one more layer. I wanna have some scratches which are just coming down. So to do that, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for another wave texture. I'm just gonna drop the wave texture down here and then I will just plug the vector up to the vector right here. And I'm also just gonna bring the texture coordinate and mapping down a little bit. All right, let's control shift and click on the wave texture to preview it and then we can play around with the settings. So the scale, I'm gonna turn this to like a four so there's not quite as many. I'll turn the distortion up to like a 4.5, something like that. So you can see the more you turn the distortion up, the more wiggly the lines are gonna be. So however wiggly you want your scratches to be, you can turn the distortion up to make them more wiggly. All right, so this is gonna be the texture for where the scratches is gonna be, but I actually wanna make a different texture for the details of the scratches. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a Musgrave texture and we'll just drop it down here. And then I can Control Shift and click on it to preview it. Now the scale, I think I'll turn this to like a two or a three, something like that. And then I'll turn the detail up pretty high to maybe like a 14, so there is more detail. And then the dimension, I'll turn that to something like a 0.56. And you can see that now that we've turned that up, there is a bunch more detail here. That looks really great. All right, now this is a cool texture, but the problem with it is it doesn't actually have the scratch marks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell the Musgrave texture only to appear where the wave texture is. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a separate, and we're gonna use the separate XYZ. 
So I'm just going to drop this right down here underneath the wave texture. And then the mapping here, I want to use the object mapping. So I'm going to plug this up to the vector right here. And then if you want to add a little dot in here, you can hold down the shift key and right click and drag over and then let go. And it's going to add this little dot in here. I just like this. And then that way this wire isn't going to be going over the wave texture. It won't change the node setup, but it looks a little bit nicer. So now what I want to do is press shift A and I'm going to add a combine X, Y, Z. So if I control shift and click on this, you can see here is the X, the Y, and the Z. So I want to combine them back up. So I'm going to take the Z and just plug that into the Z, the Y, plug that into the Y. Let me just move this over and bring this down. But then what I want to do, instead of using this Y one and putting that into the Y, I want to add the wave texture in. So I'm going to take the color and put that into the Y. And there is the result that we get. So now we've added that wave texture in. So instead of using this object vector, if I control shift and click on this, we've created this new vector and we're going to use this for the Musgrave texture instead. So you can see this is a purple one and this is also a purple one because it's a vector. So we're going to plug this vector up to the Musgrave texture and then I can control shift and click on it and now you can see what's happening so it's taking that musgrave texture that we've added but it's making these little streaks with it so that is exactly what we want now if we added this into the bump right now there would be tons of scratches and we don't want this many scratches so we need to add a color ramp to tell it where we want the scratches to be because we only want some scratches here and there so i'm going to press shift a search for a color ramp. We're just going to drop the color ramp right in here. And then I can control shift and click on the color ramp to preview it. And I'm actually going to switch these. So I'm going to drag this one here and then drag the white one over here. And you can see that now that we've done that, if you drag this closer and closer, you can kind of sharpen that up. So if you want to bring it over here, there's going to be more scratches or you can bring it really close and there's only going to be a few scratches. So just play around with this. If you want a bunch of scratches, you could drag these both over. I just want a few scratches here and there. So I'm going to bring them over like that. And you can see now there's just a little bit of scratches here and there. So now that we have this scratches map, I can just add this into the bump. So the bump here, I'm going to click on this, press shift D to duplicate it. We'll just drop it down here. And then again, this is already converted to normal data. So it can just go through the normal and we want to add this one. So the color is going to go into the height. So if I control shift and click on this, you can see here is the first bump, control shift and click on this. And there is the second bump added with the little scratches here and there. And then I can control shift and click on this. And there is the third one. So now we have three layers of bump and it makes it look a lot more interesting. And then if you want to play around with the strength, you can do that. So if you want to make these scratches a little bit stronger, you could do that. All right. I will control shift and click on this. And there we go. There is the finished material. Looks really cool. There's a lot of detail, which I really like. All right, I'll just render this out and we can check out the final image. All right, there we go. That's the tutorial. That's how you create this procedural scratched metal shader. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support this channel and also get project files for my tutorials and also get artwork project files, procedural materials and 3D models and assets that I sell, you can check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. But thank you for watching and I will see you in a future video.